Hey, what's up everybody? Welcome back to the channel. Challenges are great. They get us to stretch outside of our comfort zone and endeavor to execute something that we may or may not be able to achieve. But at least if we attempt it, it'll create an opportunity where we'll have fond memories to look back and say, I did a real good job executing that or attempting it. And this year I was presented with such a challenge. Now I have made it very clear, especially if you're a viewer of this channel, that I do not enjoy doing very long rides. But my friends Mari Bandin and Carmen Feinberg invited me to participate in something called the Horse Farm 100, which is a grand fondo that takes place in Gainesville, Florida, where you have an opportunity to do back-to-back -back centuries Saturday and Sunday. Back-to-back -back centuries. When they presented that idea to me, I had zero interest. But they challenged me because they had a plan. Mari is a nutritionist and coach who devises nutritional strategies to help cyclists achieve their goals. Carmen is a logistics expert and team builder, and they were going to marry these two virtues to put together a turnkey plan to help the majority of cyclists execute this plan to near perfection. And the group of cyclists participating in the event ranged from COVID cyclists, not so much weekend warriors, weekend warriors long distance endurance and experienced cyclists and people like myself who don't get to ride enough, who don't like doing these types of rides. So the first part of the plan involved what we do in our riding. So we devise a training plan to ramp up everyone's mileage that we would be able to execute as a team. We would target weekends to ride together, that being Saturday and Sunday rides, and incrementally increase those distances before we taper for the event. This is good not only for the physical aspect, but also for that very important aspect of cycling, the mindset. The first training ride was an easy paced 50 miler through Southwest Broward. I know or have ridden with most of the crew, but a few were new to me. For the most part, everyone completed the ride, but we did have a few who were challenged a bit by the pace. We slowed down where we needed and just made sure everyone was comfortable in the draft, well looked after. Remember, this is a team effort. We had one brief stop at mile 38 before wrapping up the ride with a loop in Weston. The ride format was what we typically do here in South Florida, which is a double pace line. And we did encourage anyone who wanted to take a turn at the front to do so. You know, it's much better training to every once in a while stick your nose in the wind, especially with this type of ride that we're planning, as opposed to just being in a procession and following wheels. Also helps with the skill level of the less experienced riders. The rolling pace we held throughout was truly 19 to 21. Post ride, we gathered to get some nutrition counseling from Mari. Right, this product, muy bien para rendimiento, eh, contiene electrolytes que se necesitan and it also has uh, carbs we need carbs I know that a lot of us are afraid of carbs but at the end of the day carbs is energy so you have to be depending on what kind of a ride you're doing if you're doing a very long ride you need X amount of carbs per ride so the purpose of this is that all of you ask me for your individual needs right porque cada uno de nosotros and that, ladies and gentlemen, is Spanglish, also known as Machucao. It's an official language here in South Florida. It truly is. All right, let's get to know part of the team. Hello, hello, beautiful people. Tell us who you are. My name is Ellis, a.k.a. EPB, a.k.a. Woo, woo! Today. Wait, wait. Ellis, how long have you been cycling? I've been cycling since COVID. I started mountain biking and then six months in, I got my first refurbished road bike. And then six months later, I invested in my bike, AKA Purple Haze. <laughs> and you're training for the double century? Absolutely not, but I love to. <laughs> you're to... Fake training for the double century. In my mind, yes. And I will be with you guys in spirit the whole way. <laughs> Ellis is gonna do the double century. Maybe. Good ride, Ellis. <laughs> So we have two superstars here, super endurance athletes. We have Mari and Jackie. Jackie knocks out a century about every week. She's actually 92 miles. So she's going to get her century in today. 
The rest of us are satisfied with 50 miles. I'll start with you, Mari. How was it for you? No, I, I, I enjoyed it. Um, I tried to keep everybody at a decent pace because tomorrow we need to do another 52. So I didn't want anybody burning up or feeling overly tired so that tomorrow they can go back and they can do another 52 or maybe more. Another 100. Maybe more. And, um, and they work their way up so that they can build not only the endurance for it, but also, you know, the, you know, the confidence to do it because... If you feel you can't, then you're not even going to bother trying. But if little by little we increase the mileage, then of course your stamina and your endurance will go up, but also you know your, your self-confidence, and that's more what we're trying to do here. So in addition to the distance, we're also focused on nutrition, Correct. rest and recovery, right? Yes, yes. And Jackie, I've got to ask you, yeah. you knock out these centuries all the time. How are you able to do like 60 miles one day, and then the next day you go out and you do 100 miles? I guess. Good diet is uh -huh. one. Mm -hmm. Diet and exercise. Diet mainly. And so that when you say exercise, do you do things off of the bike? Well, I do um, Pilates, mm -hmm. stretching, little weights. Not much. I think I need to do more weights, but I do. Um, we all need to do more weights. I know to get stronger. <laughs> but I like to pace myself. I like to enjoy my ride. You know, if I do a century, I don't need to be going 25 miles an hour average. I mean, you know, I just want to get it done so then tomorrow I can enjoy another ride. Do another one. Excellent. I don't want to feel burnt out. Okay, awesome. <laughs> Thank you, Jackie. All right. All right, tell us your name. Uh, Charles Hernandez. And how long have you been cycling? Uh, well, a really long time. I was an expert mountain biker, and then uh, my kids um, were small, so I was a, kind of a soccer dad. And then uh, I started again right before COVID, and now I've been doing road and mountain biking and gravel. Yeah. Okay, awesome. And yeah. how do you feel about training with Mari for the back-to-back -back centuries? Oh, great. I've been riding with Mari for a very long time. Um, sometimes uh, we talk a lot about nutrition and stuff like that. Um, I did... Uh, while, while I was riding with her, I was doing, I did 52 centuries in that one year. Wow. So um, I did a little over 12,000 miles that year. And then now um, I do a lot more gravel. I do some mountain biking and I still do road. And, um, and she still, you know, inspires me because she's a, you know, she's a great coach. Awesome. Yeah. Thanks. Yeah. I appreciate you, brother. Yeah, thank you. And this yeah. is your partner over here, right? And my wife. Yeah. That's your wife? Yeah, yeah, she yeah. stays on your wheel. Hi, I'm Gigi. Gigi. <laughs> Gigi knows how to find his wheel. Regardless of what's going on in the pace line, how long have you been cycling, Gigi? Probably 20 years. Wow, okay. Yeah. And are you excited about training for the back-to-back -back centuries? Yes, very excited. We love Gainesville and, and we love Maddie, so it's a very good combination. Okay, awesome. Thank you so much, guys. <laughs> Thank you. Appreciate you. Maria is a tremenda cyclist. And I was watching her pedal, soft pedal so she wouldn't freewheel using her gears perfectly. <laughs> I was really, really impressed. Oh, so, dime, you. ¿cuánto tiempo tienes montando bicicleta? 2019, I started with ONG Group. Uh -huh. And then uh, I was doing pretty good. And mm -hmm. then 2021, I got um, hit by a car. Oh, wow. I was in a wheelchair for oh, four no. months. Okay. So I stopped for like six months. I started with my mountain, little mm -hmm. by little. And then since then, I'm, I'm growing, growing, growing. Better and better. Okay. Are you going to do the 100 and 100? I'm thinking about it. Okay. I think I'm capable to do it. Yeah. The way I how they're so. doing it with 50 mile back to back, 60 back to back, uh -huh. 80 back to back, you'll be able to do it. I think so. I yeah. think so. I think my body is asking for it. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> I like that. I like that. And mentally, I prepare mentally because most of the time I was mentally behind. Mm -hmm. Because of the accident. Yeah. I was afraid of everybody close to me and mm -hmm. everything. But now I'm very secure of myself. Of uh, my you have pedal, a lot of confidence. Of my pedal, yes. Okay. Confidence and I've been constant, constancy. Okay. Pedaling. Okay, excellent. Vite, no fue nada. Hey, tan lindo. <laughs> Gracias, Maria. You're so sweet. Thank you. No, thank, thank you. you. Going forward, we've already devised a ride plan scheduled to help us incrementally ramp up our distances. These are the dates. So on August 24th and 25th, we're going to be doing 60 miles on Saturday, 72 miles on Sunday. Then September 14th and 15th is going to be 70 and then 75. September 28th and 29th is going to be 80 miles both of those days. And then the event is on October 12th and 13th. Of course, Mari has availed herself to provide weekly nutritional guidance to the members who are participating because a big part of this isn't just about getting the endurance of your mileage in, but making sure that you're fueling your body properly for the event 
the recovery, and then the event. So I think we have like all bases covered and we're really excited about this. I hope that you've enjoyed meeting some of my friends. What I'm gonna be doing over the next few weeks is kind of flushing out some of their personal backstories a little bit because some of the things that I'm finding out about these people as I'm riding with them is that some of them have phenomenal stories that are very inspiring which is a big part of what we do here at the channel. And one of the things that you can help us out a lot is we're trying to grow this channel. Well, we're not trying to grow this channel. We're working on growing this channel and it would be appreciated if you share this video with not just cycling friends, but please share it with non-cyclists. I found out that a, a fair number of people who are subscribed to our channel and who watch us on a regular basis aren't even cyclists. So I think these kind of stories that inspire people, motivate them, get them off the couch is a big part of what this channel is all about because of course, our focus is to inform, instruct, inspire. <laughs> all right, guys, I appreciate the support everybody is giving us. Be blessed.